Hi, I'm Joanne Woodson, a solo practitioner specializing in commercial leasing law. I've been a lawyer for a long time, and I know that there's a lot to wrap your head around when it comes to commercial leasing. The goal of my podcast, the Commercial Leasing Diva Podcast, is to make your lives as commercial leasing professionals easier and more fun. In the podcast, I speak to other commercial leasing professionals who share their expertise so that we can all improve our commercial leasing game and better serve our clients. Hello, welcome to the Commercial Leasing Diva podcast. My name is Joanne Woodsum. I am a solo practitioner specializing in commercial leasing law. I wanted to jump on here and talk a little bit about why I decided to start the Commercial Leasing Diva podcast and to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, And those things, of course, are going to be very uh, connected. So I want to start by talking about why is it called the Commercial Leasing Diva podcast? might seem like kind of a strange juxtaposition of terms with commercial leasing and diva. And Commercial Leasing Diva was actually a nickname I was given many, many years ago. And so I want to explain to you a little bit about the context of how that name came about. So over 20 years ago, I was working for a law firm and it was a great law firm, medium law firm. They had a really, really robust real property uh, department. And I was lucky enough to be in that department. And my job description was 50% commercial leasing, 50% purchase and sale of real property. And at that time, I, before I joined the firm, I had been doing commercial leasing uh, part-time, in, you know, along with other duties and various other um, incarnations. And so that seemed great because I, I thought I'll, I'll really be able to get these two practice areas under my belt. And over time, what I discovered is I had a strong preference for doing the commercial leasing work. And there were a couple of reasons for this. The first reason was that I was very fortunate to be assigned to a partner and to his main landlord client, and that client happened to own a couple of shopping centers in California. And so basically, I was in charge of these shopping centers under the supervision of this partner, and I got to know the asset manager from the client very well. I got to know the assets themselves, that is the shopping centers, very well. And over time, of course, I did a number of deals with various tenants from mom and pops to uh, national tenants. And so that was a really nice exposure to retail leasing. And as I quickly discovered, I also, and still to this day between us, uh, have a very strong preference for retail leasing. I just really love retail, all aspects, all aspects of it. But that's a separate conversation. So like I said, after I'd been doing this for about a year, um, and learning a lot, both purchase and sale and commercial leasing, I went to my partner and I said, listen, um, I, I appreciate the opportunity to have learned so much about these two areas. I have a strong preference for commercial leasing. Um, and I would like to do commercial leasing 100% of the time. And my partner said, well, that's super. I'm glad you're having a great time. We, we really like having you here, but, um, you know, we just can't accommodate that request. And so after I asked for that, I I got the nickname Commercial Leasing Diva. Now, when that nickname was given to me, as you can imagine, it was not, it was said jokingly and maybe with a little affection, it was not really a compliment. Um, And we could go into the whole gender nuances of why was I called that if I had been a man and I had asked for the same thing, would they have called me a Commercial Leasing Devo? Uh, <laughs> all right, we'll set that aside. Um, obviously, when I was given that nickname, there were certain negative elements, right? Because I had asked for something. Um, the impression was that I was maybe feeling entitled, maybe feeling a little spoiled, maybe feeling picky, maybe feeling demanding, all the sort of negative connotations like a prima donna, I have to have things just this way, Um, negative connotations of of that word diva. And of course, I was not happy with that. But then one day I thought about a diva. A diva is obviously um, traditionally understood as a prima donna, the first lady, prima donna, a diva of breath. And she's the star and she's very, very good. She's a diva, she's above others. 
And so I looked up at the time, probably in a dictionary. Now you can just go to Google and looked up, what does diva mean? And so one of the definitions is a usually glamorous and successful female performer or personality. Okay, I like that. Wikipedia says the Latin word for goddess, that's diva, and it's used to refer to a celebrated woman of outstanding talent in the world of opera, theater, cinema, fashion, or music. It's like, okay, successful, you know, talented. I'm liking all these words. So I decided that I would just embrace the concept of diva. After all, an opera diva studies for years and years and years to perfect her craft. She is dedicated. She is disciplined. She is a lifelong learner of opera, of her field, and obviously dedicated to perfecting her craft. And I liked all those. Those seem all very, very positive attributes. Um, you know, a diva has a passion for opera, typically, right? It, it, it's not worth it otherwise. Or it is a very, very hard life to be an opera singer. You, you know, there's a lot you have that goes into it. And I thought, well, I also have a passion for commercial leasing. And this was something that made me stand apart from a lot of my colleagues. Again, a lot of my colleagues were the same, right? They're divided up between commercial leasing and purchase and sale. And most of my colleagues had the opposite reaction that I had. Most of my colleagues preferred purchase and sale. They liked being part of a large team. And typically, if you're doing large-scale purchase and sale, multi-million dollar transactions, you need various people, you know, three, four, five people on, on a deal to get the deal done. And each person is assigned one piece of the transaction, but they like being part of this big team and they don't mind that they just have one tiny piece of the pie. I didn't like that. I don't mind the team part. That was fine. But I didn't like just having one tiny piece of the pie. And the way law firms are structured in a hierarchy more junior associates, so me, would probably do the due diligence title survey, which is interesting and has served me well as a commercial leasing lawyer. Um, but I didn't, I wasn't negotiating the purchase and sale agreement, right? I would give my input in terms of title issues that should be reflected, but I wasn't doing that. The senior associate maybe was doing all the writing and then a partner was doing all the negotiating. And so commercial leasing, I was the star of the show. Um, I reported to my partner. You know, in the beginning, the partner read everything I did, marked it up. I learned a tremendous amount through that experience. Um, it was really me on the front lines negotiating with clients, not negotiating with the client, but negotiating on the client's behalf and interfacing with the client. And I love that. I love that sort of one-on-one. -on -one. So, um, you know, it's always the same client, right? So purchase and sale is much more one-off, you know, typically. Although there are some clients, obviously, that are constantly buying and selling property. And so for all those reasons, I really, really liked it. And so after, you know, about six months after I'd asked for this special concession that I could do only leasing, I ended up leaving the firm and going to another firm that would allow me to do commercial leasing 100% uh, of the time. And so that I, my practice was solely devoted to commercial leasing. And and I have never looked back. So that's 20 over 24 years now that I've only done 100% commercial leasing and many years before that where I was sharing leasing with other practice areas. And my, re my original reasons being attracted to the field uh, are still true. So my original reasons were, again, as I said, the client, that to have that interaction with the client, to understand their business, to get to know various tenants and their businesses. Uh, I just really enjoyed that people aspect of it. I enjoyed the their um, the industry aspect of it. So shopping centers, learning about shopping centers. Um, and then the other part that I really like, and this is where I get totally nerded out, I really like the lease document itself. I really like digging in, understanding all the different provisions, and there are a lot, like a typical lease might have 35 different topics in it, very complicated. But to me, it was like a puzzle. And I, you know, for a lot of... Um, my relatives who are not college educated and they are like, I don't understand what you would do. I would compare it to being like a car mechanic, right? Sort of the beauty of an engine and how all the pieces go together and how they interact and how if one piece doesn't work, then, you know, the whole thing will stop. And there's both an art and a science to that, right? That mechanic, it's not merely a mechanical. Some people think leasing, all oh, this is like this mechanical thing. 
there's no creativity. And I would really disagree about that. I think it's super interesting. I still think it's interesting. Even after all these years, I am constantly learning new things, which I was like, how can that be after 30 years? But yes, it is true. Constantly learning. And I love that about it. I really, really love that about it. Um, but then there's a third element over the course of my career that has become equally important to me in terms of why I love leasing. And that is all the commercial real estate leasing professionals that I get to interact with regularly. So obviously there's other lawyers and I've met so many great lawyers in doing commercial leasing it, and many have become lifelong friends. Um, there's the commercial leasing brokers. And you know, now having done this many, many times for many different asset classes, I have a lot of friends who are brokers. Um, great people. I learned so much from them. I love partnering with them on transactions. A number of brokers I've had, you know, decade long or longer relationships with, and we've served the same clients. And that has that has been a real joy for me over time. And then of course there's architects, general contractors, asset managers, property managers, um, project managers. So many different disciplines touch on commercial leasing. And so I thought the podcast would be a great way to let people into the inside workings of commercial leasing and all the professionals that are involved, each professional's distinct role, how those professionals can best partner with each other to best serve the client. Um, and so that's why I decided to launch the podcast. And I have to say, I've done seven or eight interviews so far. And it's been amazing. Again, continue to learn from these professionals. Um, the first series you'll see is all commercial leasing brokers. They come from a variety of backgrounds. So they might specialize in landlords or tenants. They might specialize in industrial or retail or office. Um, and they're from different geographic regions, mostly from California. But because I'm licensed in both Nevada and California, um, I, I will be interviewing a couple of Nevada brokers as well. Um, so anyway, that's a little bit about me, a little bit about um, the background for the podcast. Um, I hope you enjoy these conversations. I invite you to listen. I invite you to provide comments, like, review, subscribe, et cetera. But really, you know, ask questions in the comments, um, you know, Apple Podcast or whatever you can ask questions. Um, if you have ideas for specific interviews or themes for seasons, let me know. I'm wide open to entertaining any ideas that people might have about commercial real estate leasing. And uh, I guess that's about it. So I'm super excited to be on this journey. I've never done podcasts before. <laughs> podcasts. There are a number that I listen to very regularly. And I hope that this will be one that you'll be able to listen to regularly. So bye for now, my dear colleagues, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Bye. I'm Joanne Woodsum. Thanks for listening to the Commercial Leasing Diva podcast. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, rate and review us, like and subscribe. You know the drill. The podcast is produced by Sandy Viteri and edited by Matthew Salanoa. Thank you so much again, and we'll see you next time.